Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Apocrypha Apocalypse. I am Gary Machuda, and as you know, we love all things Old Testament canon here on the Apocrypha Apocalypse. Today is February 20th, 2024, and it's a very important anniversary day. Why is it important? What is it an anniversary of? Well, we're going to talk about that in this episode. So fasten your seatbelts, folks, because the Apocrypha Apocalypse begins right now. Okay, so what's the anniversary? Well, today, February 20th, is the anniversary of the promulgation of the papal epistle called Consolienti Tibii. And this was issued February 20th, 405 AD by Pope Innocent I. And it's a very important piece of data for the history of the Old Testament and New Testament canon. But before we get into the details, I just remembered, I always forget to do this, but please, if you like this channel, if you like the topic, subscribe, like, tell your friends, let's spread the word about uh, what we do here. Also, if you want to support us financially, uh, William Albrecht and myself are both on Patreon, and we appreciate your support. Okay, so let, we're going to be talking about this very important papal epistle and, and also its connection with the canon, because uh, not only do we have to talk about the person who inquired as to the canon, uh, who is St. Exerpius, but also the Pope who was answering it, which is Pope Innocent I, and also St. Jerome. As you know, if you watch this channel, Jerome is plays a very pivotal role in the acceptance and non-acceptance of the historic Christian canon. And the reason for that is St. Jerome is the first known Christian to assign the Old Testament deuterocanonical text to the category of Apocrypha, which is the same category Protestants do today. And so he did not believe them to be inspired canonical scripture, at least not until the end of his life. So he, his opinions that he expressed in his prophecies to the Latin Vulgate, which circulated in the West and became very prominent, especially in the Middle Ages, uh, that caused a lot of confusion in terms of uh, biblical scholars who wanted to follow this great prestigious saint, yet knew that his views didn't really square with how the church used scripture. And by the way, he's also the saint that Martin Luther appealed to, and also other Protestants as well, for the Protestant canon. So let's talk a little bit about this history. Um, the history of this document is that St. Exuprius, or Exuprius, sorry, it's hard to pronounce, So, uh, who is a bishop of Toulouse in Gaul, which is modern-day France, uh, during the beginning of the 5th century, uh, he wrote a letter inquiring to the Pope as to which books are accepted as canonical scripture. And the Pope's reply becomes part of the law of church, especially in France. So, uh, who is this Saint Exerpius. Well, we don't know a lot about him. We don't know when he was born or where. Uh, we do know he died sometime after 411. And um, I'm going to be gleaning from the old Catholic encyclopedia for information on St. Exerpius. And uh, <clears throat> he succeeded St. Silvinius as Bishop of Toulouse. And he completed the Basilica of St. Saturnius that was begun by his predecessor. St. Jerome praised him for his munificence to the bunks in uh, Palestine, Egypt, and Libya, and for his charity to the people of his own diocese who were suffering from the um, deprecations of the uh, Vandals, Ellens, and Suvi. In esteem for his virtues and in gratitude for his gifts, St. Jerome dedicated his commentary on Zechariah. St. Uh, Exerpius is also best known in connection to the canon of sacred scripture. He had written to Innocent I for instructions concerning the canon and several points of ecclesiastical discipline. In reply, the Pope honored him with the letter Consolienti Tibi, dated February 405, 
which contain the list of canonical scriptures that we Catholics have today, including the deuterocanonical books of the Catholic canon. Um, now, let me stop right here. Why did St. Exuprius want to know what the canon is? That's a very interesting issue. Sometime before 405, he makes this inquiry. And I think you can maybe put together the pieces of possibly why that is. I mean, there could be any unknown reason. I mean, but if we're going to stick with the data we have, I think it's really his association with St. Jerome. But continuing on in the article, the Catholic Encyclopedia says from Jerome's letter to Furia of Rome in 394, and from the Epistle of St. Paulinus to Amandus of Bordeaux in 397, it seems probable that uh, Exerpius was a, a priest at Rome, then later at Bordeaux, before he was raised to the episcopate, although it is possible that in both of these letters, reference is made to a different person. So let me stop there. You know, it's interesting with such an eccentric name as Exerpius that there would be more than one person named, but believe it or not, there were. Continuing on in the article, it says, just as he became, when he became bishop is unknown, that he occupied the Sea of Toulouse in February 405 is evident from the letter of Innocent I, I mentioned there above, and from the statement of St. Jerome in a letter to Aristicus, it is certain that he was still living in 411. And it is sometimes said that St. Jerome reproved him in his letter to Riparius, priest of Spain, for tolerating the heretic Villagentius. But as Villagentius did not belong to the Diocese of Toulouse, St. Jerome was probably speaking of another bishop. Exerpius was early venerated as a saint, and even in the time of St. Gregory of Tours, he was held equal in veneration to St. Saturnius. So very holy, very humble bishop of Toulouse, one who had frequent contact with Jerome as early as uh, 394, 397. We know that he, he must have had contact and correspondences with Jerome, but precisely what the nature of that is, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. Um, by the way, those two dates, 394 and 397, come very close to some other dates as well. For example, the councils of Hippo Regis in 393, Carthage 3, 397, um, that certainly corresponds to that date. And, um, and then you have 405, where Pope Innocent writes his letter. Again, the title of it is Consolienti Tibii on February 20th, 405. So this is the anniversary of this letter. And so I want to read the pertinent area concerning the canon in which Innocent wrote to Exerpius. And it says this, quote, A brief edition shows what books really are received in the canon. These are the desirata of which you wish to be informed verbally. Of Moses, five books, that is, of Genesis, of Exodus, of Leviticus, of Numbers, of Deuteronomy, of Joshua, of Judges, one book of Kings, four books, and also Ruth, of the prophets, 16 books, of Solomon, five books, the Psalms. Likewise, of the histories, Job, one book, of Tobias, one book, Esther, one, Judith, one, of Maccabees, two, of Esther, two, Perpolipnum, two books, by the way, that's Chronicles. Likewise, of the New Testament, of the Gospels, four books, of Paul the Apostle, 14 epistles, of John 3, epistles of Peter 2, an epistle of Jude, epistle of James, Acts of the Apostles, and the Apocalypse of John. Other, however, others, however, which were written by a certain Lucius under the name of Mattathias, or of James the Less, or under the name of Peter and John, or which is written by Nexochorus, and Leidendis as philosophers, uh, the philosophers, under the name of Andrew, or under the name of Thomas. And if there are any others, you know that they ought not to only to be repudiated, but also 
condemned. And that is the letter that we're celebrating today, letter of Pope St. Innocent I, to the bishops of Gaul via the bishop of Toulouse, St. Exoprius. Now, to kind of give you an overview of where this letter fits in in the history of the canon, as I mentioned, you know, we have first mention of him in Jerome's letter to Furia in Rome 394, which one year early we had earlier we had in North Africa, uh, the North African Council of Re- Hippo Regis. Um, now, obviously, Jerome wouldn't have a clue what's going on in North Africa at this point, but nevertheless, he speaks of Exerpius. So there is already contact with him prior to 394. In his epistle of St. Paulinus to Amandus of Bordeaux, that's in 397, which, uh, by the way, corresponds to uh, the Council of Carthage III that repeats the canon of Hippo Regis, which, by the way, affirms the Deuteronomy canon as well. And uh, then you have Pope St. Innocent, the first letter, which is 405. Jerome writes his, or finishes his commentaries on the Minor Prophets, and specifically Zechariah, where he dedicates that to Exerpius. That was finished in 406. So he dedicates the commentary a year after the Pope promulgates this letter to the bishops of Gaul. Chances are, by that point, I don't think Jerome would be aware of that papal uh, decree. Who knows whether he knows about the decrees of the North African councils, then we have Jerome's letter to Rusticius, where he mentions um, St. Exerpius still living in 411. And then finally, of course, we have uh, Carthage uh, 419, which becomes part of the African Code, and that becomes part of the legislation of church law in the East. And uh, after that, you got Florence and you got Trent. And they basically all affirm the same canon. So uh, today, very important day in the history of the canon in uh, Pope Innocent I's letter. And also, you know, I'm I'm writing a paper right now. I'm hoping to eventually get it published, uh, probably be an academic uh, level type paper, where I'm going to propose that uh, Jerome, when he changes his mind on the Deuterocanon at the end of his life. Well, first, I'm going to raise the question whether he does that. I'm going to give you the evidence for that. And then I'm going to posit that it's probably through St. Exerpius that he learns about Innocent the First Canon. And that's why he changes his mind and goes along with church law on the issue. And um, that's my theory. And I'm putting a paper together to try to at least put all the puzzle pieces on on the board and let you decide whether you think that's what happened or not. There's really no way of knowing. We don't have any direct evidence of this stuff, but very interesting stuff indeed. All right. So this is a short video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's an important uh, anniversary date. Um, Again, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Let's get this site visible, this channel visible, so we can help people learn the truth and unveil the truth about the so-called Apocrypha. And again, also William Albrecht and myself, we appreciate your support on Patreon. Until next time, I'm here to have a great, great week. Bye-bye.